As a 3D artist, you know that painting textures can make or break a model. And today, there are a lot of specialized texturing software that you can choose from. So in today's video, I will go over some of the best options you have right now. Some software you might not even heard of, but they are really amazing. So let's see what this is all about. Before we continue, let's take a quick look at the new Geoscan S1 from Taubotics. This is a handheld 3D scanner that hits centimeter level accuracy for accurate and dependable data on site. The scanner works by building point clouds in real time and on screen, since it supports live preview, so check coverage as you go and save yourself from many extra passes later. Since it blends structure with color, the results are easier to read and make more sense for mapping, inspection, and research. It is built to handle a mix of situations and environments, sighting tunnels, parking areas, forests, or city streets. Indoors, it works for scanning offices or tracking construction progress, and for moving setups, you can mount it on vehicles or even robotic dogs to capture data on the go. On the workflow side, it exports directly in PCD, with LIS and PLY also supported. The files are ready to open as soon as the scan is done. In addition, it runs on Ubuntu and works with ROS, so developers can drop it straight into robotics or mapping pipelines. It is priced at $3,980. The Geoscan 1 offers accurate field scanning, so click the link to see how it works. We're gonna start with 3D Code Textura, which is a special version of 3D Code focused purely on texturing and rendering. It basically strips away 3D Code sculpting and modeling features, offering a cheaper texturing only software. As you may know, 3D Code has long been popular for its excellent painting tools, so I think Textura makes a lot of sense. Its key strength lies in combining different approaches. You can do per pixel painting, voxel painting, p tags, or micro vertex painting all in one software. In practice, this means you are limited by having perfect UVs. The painting experience is known to be very fluid and responsive, even with large brushes and high res textures. Many artists actually praise 3D Code's brush engine. It feels more like Photoshop's brush blending, and it has cool features like image projection painting and splines. 3D Code also excels at creating smart materials. Its version of Substance's smart materials which can automatically apply details like edgeware or cavity dust based on the model's geometry. Moreover, Textura includes a built-in renderer with PBR lighting, so you can see your model, enter SDRI environment maps, and even render turntables without leaving the software. Another strength is its support for very large texture sizes, up to 16K maps, in addition to a robust handling of multiple UV sets. It also has an awesome library of 500 scanned PBR materials that you can download for free to use in your projects, which is a sweet bonus. The 3D Code team has been steadily updating Textura along the main 3D software, which is 3D Code. And recently in 2025, they brought a bunch of quality improvements. For instance, a new hotkey manager and new eye themes were added, so you can personalize the interface and keys to your liking. They also implemented a real-time search and filter for the assets and the layers. This is incredibly handy when your scene has a ton of materials, brushes, and objects. Also, one standout feature is the non-destructive text, shape, and image layers in the paint room. So now, when you add a text or an image decal or even paint a curve, 3D Code keeps that information live on that layer. And you can come back at any moment to edit the text content or adjust the spline points or curves. And it will update the paint stroke. This is similar to Substance's font and SVG support bringing vector-like flexibility to 3D Code's painting. On the other hand, Instamat is one of the newest players on the scene, and it is making waves, because it is like only one next-generation texturing software. Essentially, from what I have seen, Instamat aims to unify what would normally require multiple programs. But what does that mean? Well, it covers 3D model texturing and painting, node-based material creation, like Substance Designer, in addition to procedural geometry generation, asset library creation, and texture baking all in one place. Is it ambitious? Absolutely. And this is one way where it is different from software such as Substance Painter. One of Instamat's biggest strengths is its completely non-destructive workflow. It uses something called Element Graph, which is a node system that isn't limited to just images. It can process meshes, 
point clouds in addition to other things in the same graph. This means you could import a high-res model, generate LODs or variations, texture them, and then export, and you can do all of that procedurally. Its painting engine is also unique. When you paint on a model, the strokes are stored parametrically. So if you later change the model's UVs or even geometry, your paint can reproject and adapt without starting over. And this is actually a game changer for iterative workflows where the model tweaks come later. Another strength is the massive library of content Istamat ships with, which is over a thousand high quality procedural materials, each with adjustable parameters for infinite variations. All these materials are essentially graphs that you can inspect and learn from, since they are open and editable. Instamat also supports full UDM workflows, in addition to advanced baking, which is GPU accelerated, and even some AI powered tools like style transfer, upscaling, inpainting, and so on. And perhaps the most striking of them all is that the team behind Instamat has a free pioneer license for individuals and small businesses. So you can get this amazing software for free with paid versions for small studios, professionals, indie developers, and so on. Armor Paint is another interesting 3D texturing software. It is essentially an open source and standalone 3D texturing software, which some people call an indie alternative to Substance Painter, which means its purpose is physically based texture painting. You can load a 3D model and start painting color, metalness, roughness, normals, and so on and you can do that in real time on the surface. Its strength lies in its GPU-accelerated engine, a node-based material workflow. Practically, this means you can achieve highly detailed textures and still pen and brush in real time. It also integrates a node graph material editor for creating procedural materials or fill layers, similar to Substance Designer, but very simplified. This node system lets you build custom materials or just imported PBR textures, and then paint with them. And since it is open source, Armor Paint can be compiled for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and even iPad and Android. And it has a lifelink plugin for Blender, Unreal, Unity, etc. to send and receive painting data. And the best thing about it is its price. The source is free on GitHub. And compiled binaries are very affordable, around $19 for one time, which is a far cry from subscription models. For hobbyists and small studios, this essentially offers a bang for the buck. You get real-time painting, no recurring costs, and the flexibility of being open source. But the worst thing about it is that it is not actually a cutting-edge texturing software. We can talk about texturing software without talking about Substance 3D Painter, or Substance Painter, which is often called the Photoshop of 3D texturing. It is now the industry standard software for painting detailed and physically based textures directly on 3D models especially in video game development. So, its real-time viewport lets you paint, add masks and materials, and update them on the fly. So we always know what your asset will look like in the engine. Substance Painter's huge library of smart materials, masks, and generators help you add realistic wear, dirt, and effects without manual effort. And as you may know, it is used across almost every AAA game studio and VFX house in the industry because it is great to bring 3D assets to life, in addition to having a robust baking engine for maps. Adobe keeps improving Painter to a certain extent, with frequent updates. And just recently, some standout features include a path tool for drawing precise 2D shapes and curves that can be filled or stroked, which is great for things like stripes, decals, or stitches. Painter also introduced a built-in texture and vector graphics tool, allowing you to import SVGs or type text and paint them directly on the model. The baking workflow got smarter too. There's now automatic cage generation for baking, meaning the software can calculate projection cages for high poly detailed baking without manual setup. And performance was improved too, so if you edit a texture or substance material externally, it can auto refresh it in the project, and all of these additions kind of make it more efficient over time. You see, Substance Painter is often the benchmark that other texturing tools are compared to, or compared against, simply because it strikes a great balance between power and usability. You see, it is more accessible than Mari, with no complex node graphs required for basic tasks, but far more advanced than the basic paint modes in different 3D software. And since I mentioned Mari, let's talk about it next. Mari is actually a texturing titan designed by the Foundry, for demands of high-end film and VFX work, 
In fact, it was born during the production of the film Avatar in 2009, when Water Digital needed better texturing for creatures in the film. I would say Mari is more like a specialized painting monster, capable of handling insanely detailed and high-resolution textures across countless UDMs without breaking a sweat. This makes it ideal for texturing hero characters or massive assets in movies, which require 32-bit 8K plus maps on dozens or even hundreds of UDMs. Mari's primary strength is scalability. It can paint on huge models with hundreds of texture maps as if it is nothing, where other tools kinda struggle. It also offers a robust layering and node graph material system, giving technical artists total control over complex surfacing setups, which is often used in movies as I said. In production, Mari is appreciated for its precision and fidelity. You can zoom in and zoom out and do texture painting for very complex creatures, and you can paint in extreme details. Studios also integrate Mari into pipelines for its color management and UDM workflow, ensuring that they will get exactly what they want after the texture painting is done. So the general consensus is, Mari is the king when you need ultra high resolution and huge asset support, especially for film productions. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about Blender, which as you know, isn't solely for texturing, because it is a full 3D software, but it does include a texture painting mode that many artists use, especially for stylized hand-painted assets or quick tweaks. The biggest strength of Blender's painting tools is that they are built right in, and they are completely free. If you're already modeling or sculpting in Blender, hopping into texture paint to slap some colors and masks on a model is actually straightforward. Blender supports painting color, roughness, normals, etc., and even multi-layer painting with add-ons or node setups. It is great for simpler and day-to-day -day detailed tasks. Notably, Blender has support for UDM tiles, so you are not limited to a single 0 and 1 UV space. You can paint across multiple UDMs for high resolutions. This was actually a welcome update in recent years. For many indie developers or hobbyists, Blender texture painting is actually good enough, especially for creating stylized textures or prototyping materials without needing another software. Plus, you can benefit from Blender's general tools, like sculpting and shading nodes in the same workflow. Recently, Blender's core texture painting hasn't been radically changed, I mean compared to its modeling and rendering improvements, because Blender development focus has been on things like geometry nodes, the real-time compositor, in addition to other big projects. That being said, there is an ongoing interest in improving painting, but the good thing is that the community has developed powerful add-ons, like B Painter, Layer Painter, and so on, which add layer stacks and better brush management to Blender's painting workflow. But out of the box, Blender painting got only incremental improvements. But generally speaking, it is still great and you can do a lot of things with it. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.